Hello. Unjani. Diapela kunjani. Diapela kwanza sisi Australia kwenye ngao ba ungubano na sisi mchambu. You can tell us a bit about uh, ama subjects so watanda wen. Okay. Okay. Ika malam dun ati ni mgoni. Um, I subject ni watanda yeskole ni physical sciences and mathematics because I wanna be a chemical engineer. Goto goto inga nufunua i chemical engineer. Wao nga funu mchambu wenzi catering or uzi elegu fashion design je. No, I like working with chemicals. Mm. I find working with chemicals quite interesting. That's why. Okay. I know me nangu fasi lintanzi sisi som. Uti numbuzo wako for our teacher. What was Lamarck's theory, and how was Darwin's theory different? Cool. So that question was, what was, was Lamarck's theory and how is Darwin's theory different? First off, who was Lamarck? He was a French scientist. He was around from 1744 to 1829. And his main idea is he rejected fixity. Okay, so what is fixity? Um, fixity was an idea that was popular among the 16th and 17th century. European zoologists sort of took this idea of the Bible and they said that every organism was created perfectly and they did not change okay we call that theory creationism now what Lamarck said he said that's rubbish organisms adapt to fit to their environment but what he specifically said is he said individual organisms adapt and that already needs to start waving flags in our minds because what is our general definition of evolution what adapts populations of organisms adapt so Lamarck had this idea of the law of use and disuse. Now this should be ringing a bell. Okay, this is really this is really interesting stuff, and it's quite funny for us now. I mean, you must remember at this time it was it was brand new information. I mean, no one could could imagine anything like this. Now we can laugh and say he was a bit silly, mm -hmm. but let's see what his law said. So his law of use and disuse is he said that specific organs and organisms either enlarge or reduce depending on if they are used or not used. So when we look at the side of use. He realized that in canines or in carnivores, their canine teeth were really, really long. So those are the really sharp pointed ones. And he said that was because they had to tear tough meat continuously. Then he looked at snakes and he said they, they had small non-functional vestigial hind limbs. And that was because over time, the snakes did not need to use those hind limbs because they merely slithered using their whole bodies. So slowly over time, those legs got smaller and smaller until they disappeared completely. So he went on to say that these characteristics that an organism adapted in order to adapt to an environment was then passed on to their offspring. And this theory was called the theory of inheritance of acquired characteristics. Now you guys were chatting to me before the show. What was your example that you used? about Lamarck <laughs> and, and this idea of an inherited characteristics being passed on. Um, the example is that um, if my dad was a fisherman and then automatically when I'm born, I have this ability to fish. Okay, which doesn't make sense. Yeah. And we can use our knowledge of genetics and inheritance to understand this better. So a really common example that Lamarck liked to use was that of the giraffe. He said long ago the giraffe had a really, really short neck, but he could not reach the top of the trees to get the really good leaves. So slowly over time, this giraffe's neck had to stretch and I have a really long neck. so. <laughs> It's, it's a great example for me as well. But this giraffe had to stretch its neck. And with each generation, as the giraffe's neck got longer, its children or its offspring were born with longer necks. And we've already spotted this problem, okay? Well, how do things get passed on from your parents to you and then eventually on to your children? It's with our DNA, it's with our genetics, and that's how inheritance works. So you've already spotted that problem. Another way to understand it nicely is, I see you've got pierced ears. If you have children, are your children going to be born with pierced ears? No. no. Do you have any tattoos? No. Would you get a tattoo? Yes. Will your children be born with the same tattoo as you? No. No. Okay, so we can see how Lamarck's theory doesn't really make sense, but it was still an important theory, okay? Even though it was disproven by genetics, it was important in the fact that it suggested a mechanism for change in organisms over time. So then we come to Darwin. He was an English scientist and he was around from 1805 to 1882. Now what he did is he loved to travel and he traveled all across the earth and he made a lot of observations. So let's just quickly look at some of the observations that he made. 
Okay, he saw some fossils of extinct animals were very similar to other animals, either living or extinct, that were living close by. He saw that lands with similar climates don't always have similar animals. He saw that many of the plants and animals of different continents are distinctive. He saw the unique species on islands are often similar to those on the nearest mainland. And he saw there was a variation of very similar species between close islands. All varieties were similar, but different from the other islands and the mainland. So what he started to get was that clearly it wasn't just a specific individual organism adapting for an environment, it was populations. And specifically that point that said in one area there is biodiversity, there are slightly different organisms. So that made him think and realize that clearly biodiversity is not dependent on climate or environment because not all organisms adapted in the same way. And he took all of these observations and he took 20 years to review them. And he also drew on his grandfather's observations as well as um, another biologist, Charles Lyell. And he eventually published his book called On the Origin of Species by Natural Selection. And that is a very important aspect of Darwin's theory, natural selection and survival of the fittest. Okay, so Darwin's key elements were that species produced more offspring than they can survive because of the competition for resources. And he also said individuals within a species vary. And this is the whole idea of survival of the fittest or natural selection. So very quickly, you guys seem very, very awake this morning and super <laughs> clever. So what do you understand by the term of survival of the fittest or natural selection? Um, I, I understand that if you are in a certain areas. Can I use an example of the finches? Yes. In different places, they found that the finches had different size beaks because um, they had to eat different foods. Like in another island, you'd find a, a finch. A finch is a bird with a small beak, and the other islands, they found um, finches with be with um, large beaks because of the different foods that are produced in the different islands. Right. And then if there was a finch that didn't have the, the correct kind of beak to get the food in the, that area, they would die. it would die because it yes. couldn't feed. Okay, so that's a really important thing with Darwin. So although we like to laugh about Lamarck's theory sometimes, and we say he was silly, how, if I'm a good fisherman, why would my kid be born a good fisherman? PK also said her kid is going to be great in all sports because she's so brilliant. <laughs> um, okay, so, but, but it was a good start. It was a good start to move on from that creationism. And then Darwin just took that one step further and he was a really scientific mind. And I want you guys to also observe things and you know make hypothesis and find ways to research it and become a great scientific mind. Like, do something great for our generation. Um, and yeah, just remember for Darwin, so he, he was about the natural selection or survival of the fittest, and therefore slowly over time, different populations living in specific areas would adapt slowly but surely so that they could live there. And it's not based on the climate or the environment, purely on the climate or environment, because obviously then we wouldn't have any biodiversity. And you know, we have so many different kinds of plants and animals and all that stuff, okay. Guys, if you want to go into a little bit more detail, especially about the points of Darwin's observations, because that can get a little bit confusing at times, definitely check out Moby School, because you can get the full lessons, and it goes a little bit more into depth than what I've done it right now, but you guys seem sharp, so I hope you guys at home manage to understand, but I'm sure you'll be fine. Oputame Obanikam, Oikam Lamming Silvum Kit. But I'll say Nova, Ugumetric in Jangoba, Ugumetric, twenty thirteen. Se Gubenja, an experience in Roy Fundile, in La Ubonuzi, when some mistakes, La Improve Econom, Clamping Advice, Abany, Inga, and Ezgo twenty, Ezgumetric in twenty thirteen, Woody Abenz in Jan. Okay. Yeah, I'm not born by like you could write like I'm not even mistakes is a map of metric. I'm bending as Ben Gena, so you can't inform any study group early. Now, we're going to end up born and go by late term, the first term and the second term, then the Amber Gobi, but you get only um do also fund the next year. A metric, Finnegan, I was a fuman study group early, can they get as one by right? 
definitely because zothe hothe ikopano ke madla ngamanye amagama nanifunda niba ningi at least nangazi something yakhona ukubuza when uyayaze bo nalapho ungazi wena ngizokubuza but um, I was telling you what your question to our teacher in studio is. Why do we accept uh, Darwin's theory today, but not Lamarck's? Right, why do we accept Darwin's theory today and not Lamarck's? Now, you could also be asked this question um, in the form of tabulate the differences between Lamarck and Darwin's theories. Okay, now just remember, when you are asked to tabulate something or to draw up a comparison, you need to show both the similarities and the differences. So I told you guys to get pen and paper ready. I'm going to show you a table with the main points. And if you can understand this, you will know Darwin and Lamarck like the back of your hand. And you will get this question 100% all the time because it's, it's quite a common question and it's something you need to understand. Okay, so let's have a look at the table. Lamarck and Dar Darwin both believe that life forms were originally simple and became progressively more complex. They both believed that species constantly changed and new species developed and others became extinct. And we spoke about how they rejected the idea of um, fixity of species. They rejected that idea of creationism. Another thing they had in common was that only the best adapted individuals would survive changes in the environment. Now, as we look further on in this table, we'll see they start to disagree with some things. So Lamarck said that each organism is spontaneously created and travels down an um, and, and, and independent evolutionary line towards perfection. Sorry about that mistake there, guys. Whereas Darwin said similar organs are related and are descendants of a common ancestor. And remember when he observed these different fossils um, of slightly similar organisms, this, this is where this sort of came from. So he saw that a lot of organisms sort of came down from the same big brother way, way, way up in the evolutionary tree. Another difference was that Lamarck thought about the law of use and disuse, and he said organs that are used develop, whereas organs that are not used shrink. And um, these new characteristics are required to the result of the organs adapting to an environment, and that new characteristic is then inherited by the offspring. Darwin said variation in populations exist due to sexual reproduction and individuals with characteristics that allow them to survive have more offspring. Populations thus change as the fitter individuals survive and their offspring dominate the next generation and the less fit individuals die out. And that was the whole idea of survival of the fittest or natural selection. And then the last one, the Marx theory is not supported by genetics, whereas Darwin's theory is supported by genetics. And I hope that kind of answers your question in the end. The fact that Darwin, his theory can be supported by genetics and scientists all over the world from now until the end of time can sort of go back and research and do experiments to, to prove it, they will, be, they will all get the same answer because genetics is a fact in our scientific world. Okay, so yeah, that's the difference, guys. Good luck with your tables. I hope you managed to copy all of that down. <laughs>